Welcome to Barbell Shrug. I'm Anders Warner, Doug Larson, Mike Lombardi from Whoop. What's Dude, going on? This I feel, is your I feel like we just did time. this. I know. This is your second time on Barbell Shrugged. We just had a banging episode of the Whoop podcast. Yes. At live we from CrossFit Games. I know. Yeah, CrossFit Games. Did you guys have fun out there? It's a there great was time. a line outside Whoop every time I walked by, like 30 deep. You know what was great about that is it really made it easy to tell when events were happening when you were inside because mm -hmm. when there was basically nothing, the place would flood. And it's like, oh, it's time for an individual event again. Everyone just empties out. Gives you a little mm -hmm. break. Gives you a break. A little right. breather. Tell me about your strain score because we talked a little bit about on the show, and I was telling you how, like, I could tell when we're doing a show because there's, like, this heightened little thing. Um, when you're at the booth, is your, is your whoop just like, dude, chill out. You're in the middle of a workout right now. So, <laughs> well, I do. A, so if we were looking at that period of time, my strain just from, let's say, waking up at 645, getting to the venue by 730, and then just kind of speaking with people from 745 a.m. till 6, um, cleaning up, getting back, that strain prior to any sort of training was about a 15. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and give it yeah. my day My day yesterday of actual training and work uh, and everything was only like a 12 and a half. So Wait, for all the people that don't have a whoop yet, yeah. they don't really know what that yeah. means. Okay. Like, what's, the, what's the context there for the so numbers? So the context of uh, strain for on the, the way we calculate it with whoop is on a scale of 0 to 21, and we're measuring basically cardio activity, heart, heart rate activity. So the WHOOP is pulling heart rate data from you every single second of the day. It's transmitting it. And once we have your max heart rate and your resting heart rate, we're always measuring what percentage of your max you're at. So, for example, we're standing in uh, Invictus Fenway right now, and it's like 85 degrees with humidity. So uh, <laughs> the uh, heart that's, rate, that, that's why the we're heart soaking rates wet currently. Elevated. So I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if after this it detected an activity for just kind of being slightly elevated yeah. uh, for a period of time. So that's effectively what we're looking at. If a normal day is just walking around, going to work, doing your normal tasks, um, you're going to have little peaks where, where the heart rate goes up. But obviously in that booth situation when you're, you guys can attest to this, when you're really engaged nonstop, nonstop, probably not hydrating and definitely not fueling enough. Mm -hmm. uh, before long, it's... Uh, you're like, man, this is <laughs> this is the longest yeah. day. We oh, talk yeah. about it all the time where we're on the road doing the shows, and then this is when people hear us talking and doing the fitness, and then what they don't realize is, like, the road is hard. Yeah. Like, it's super <laughs> fun, and you're but you're always, like, on to the next big thing, like the, the big breakfast in the morning, and then we have to train, and then we do three shows, and then we're going out to dinner, and then there may or may not be a drink, and then it's midnight, and then 6 a.m. the next and day, you're, you like, go. right back on it. And uh, you can see that stuff when it when it pops up on the phone. Oh, it's like wild! Yeah, you, you know, apps like th just buzzing all day. Totally. Um, what I noticed the most also was, even though I was getting a good quantity of sleep, I, my recovery was terrible. Yeah, I compared it with the the buttery bros, and they're sleeping like two hours and getting a higher recover yeah. than me. So, um, and they're carrying those giant cameras around yeah. all day. Those <laughs> things are not little. Some of the hardest working guys there. Um, but yeah, that's. That's uh, the games what are, are the, great. What are they? What are their scores? Are you guys tracking any of that? Like when you see them, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna totally creep on their scores, and it's <laughs> like they're they're really working. I mean, they're all over the place. They've got massive cameras. They're mass. They're filming a documentary with basically them and very little other staff. Right. Uh, I think they were pretty taxed. They need a week. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they, they, need, they need some time. Yeah. They need some time. I, it'll be interesting. I think that's just the way they roll. You yeah, know? and they're putting a video out like <laughs> yeah. every night at the games with that caliber of editing. I they're think not sleeping. I, no, especially during that week. I mean, no. it's, it's to be understood with any big thing if, you know, for CrossFit, that that's the show. The games is, you got to be yeah. on. This is this is when it is, and you got to ride yeah. the lightning. Um Hopefully they have a time, but now it's going to be the open and not that long, and they're already doing a lot of blues stuff. And um, yeah. I'm, you guys definitely understand traveling so yeah. much. You're like, I'm doing everything I can, but the I work have, has to get done. I wish the Whoop was around when like Ozzy Osbourne was on tour. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh wow, he's at a 28 every night for daily strain on his body. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I feel like we are like when you go to the CrossFit Games, it's like you're like. There's like this big concert going on, and you're playing your role in your own concert, and like you're always talking. And then, imagine seeing somebody that at like 10 o'clock at night turns the lights on and is like, "We're gonna burn this thing down. Let's go!" Like an actual 
lead singer of a massive concert. Like, they, their lives have to be so hard. It's effectively like shift work, right? Yeah. Those guys. Is do, you, do you have anyone like that, by the way? Any, like, rock, Ozzy, rock, rock star type no, people? Not like not musicians, not people, people that, like, play in front of big audiences? Ozzy's on heroin. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, it's very possible that there are, the same way that we didn't know Rory McElroy was wearing Whoop until it was all over the place. Mm. Uh, it's possible that some people are. That's definitely something that we want to investigate with some of the other people we're working with. What does touring look like? What does day of concert, day after yeah. concert look like? How can they improve their recovery? Because you see so many times now that stars are having to cancel dates or push back dates, probably just burning it too much. Yeah. 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 Just can't do it. And it's Dude. just so unhealthy. It's it's a tough place to be. They're, they're effectively night shift workers. And they're n when you get out of that normal circadian rhythm of going to bed, when it is night, it really starts to mess with all of your systems, you know, gut, yeah. all of that really starts to take a toll. And you can only get so recovered if you're basically living backwards. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Have, have you guys seen data on that where you have shift workers in one yeah. category versus kind of normal life people? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I believe Kristen would tell you that the data suggests that people that live in that flipped state, always up at night, awake during the day, or excuse me, sleeping during the day, have something shorter than, or something like 10 years left lo less life expectancy if they were the flip. Damn. So not to, not to depress anybody that yeah. Yeah. that's their life. No. Well, I, I, wonder I wonder what it says around, like, they, got, they got also got eight hours of sleep, but their, but their deep sleep was, like, 50% shorter. Like, since it, it does the breakdown with RAM and deep sleep and all that, I, I wonder what, if those numbers fluctuate, even if the total sleep is the same. One thing that's definitely true is, you have less room for error with all of the other things. So nutrition, hydration, training, it has to be so dialed in when you're on that night schedule for you to have kind of any chance to, to make it out in any sort of good shape. Yeah. We should look at that. That would, that would be interesting for us to kind of well, look I'm at. Well, I'm really interested this year when I know you guys have partnered up with some really high-level athletes, Brooke Wells, um, Katrin. Like, to follow their schedule with the way that they have to do the qualifying process this year would be very interesting because it's going to be, like, small training at home for a month, and then they have to go international travel over and over and over again um, until they qualify or whatever their goals are. I mean, a lot of them are going to be doing it to make money now and not just qualifying. Like, there's an actual schedule where they can be pro athletes and go on tour. And, I mean, Kelsey, like, she's going to – go to five, six sanctionals all across the world. No that's, question. It's going to be a mess. It's probably going to look a little different for individual versus team athletes since the teams, to my understanding, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, have no way of qualifying directly through the Open, right? I actually don't know about uh, that. I don't know anything. I don't, <laughs> I, don't <believe> <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe they could last year, so there's way less incentive for team athletes to even really do the Open. Maybe they'll do it just mm. as part of something to do but i imagine that they're already thinking about what sanctionals yeah. are we going to let's start doing the qualifiers water blues uh, i'm sure everyone's just going they, they love the trip everyone well, yeah. who doesn't love it it's probably like the best event it's definitely for us <laughs> it's, it's gonna be in the miami we don't even have to work out we're yeah. just in miami hanging it's the, out it's the best event you really can't beat that venue. yeah uh you guys just put out i'm wearing it doug's wearing it you have it on i'm walk i'm going to the app right now right on um the, there's a couple really cool new features that you guys just put out in the Gen 3. No, I'm not updating this thing. Remind me later. Ah! Uh, <laughs> here we go. Tell me about the, I mean, one, let's kind of walk us through just like yeah. from from Gen 2 to Gen 3. What were the big upgrades? Um, I know this thing. I see it everywhere. I can't even tell who you guys are sponsoring versus who's just blown away by this and it's showing up because – um, when we were doing the one-ton challenge at the games and getting athletes and all this, and I was like, well, why don't you just invite that person? They're like, well, we don't sponsor them. And I'm like, well, they're on their phone every day recording their workouts and showing you the heart rate. And I was like, I assumed they were on the team. But it's kind of just taken over our, our sport a little bit. It really has. It's any sort of training. People take training seriously, no matter if it's the one-ton challenge, CrossFit, or yeah. endurance. People want to know. There yeah. was already this data out there. Now we're giving them internal load data. Big differences between Gen 2 and Gen 3. So Gen 2 was looking at 
about a two-day battery life. We've upped that to five days. Super nice. That's, that's huge. Huge. Mm -hmm. If you forget over the weekend, you're not going to lose all that yeah. data. That's perfect. Uh, all the same chargers still work, but that's a big one. The, the way we can do that is we've switched from an older version of Bluetooth connection to Bluetooth low energy, which also allows us to broadcast heart rate to other Bluetooth-capable devices, so particularly Concept2, things like that. So if you're wanting to get your heart rate data and you're just doing kind of monostructural work, it's a perfect opportunity to broadcast the heart rate from your wrist to the monitor, and then you're going to get it on both your uh, Whoop app, and you're going to get it on the screen. Is that for all Concept2 stuff? Mm -hmm. Do they have the, so you can, whether it's the bike, I believe the you earth. need the PM5 monitor gotcha. for Concept2. Cool. But, yes, as long as you have that the broadcast heart rate nice. option on in, in the app, you're good to go. The other thing that's pretty cool is the strain coach. So we've talked about this, and when we actually did the first conversation together, I brought up your data and said, hey, here's your optimal strain for your days based yeah. off of your recovery, and here's your actual. We're now giving all users that ability to control that themselves. So you get your recovery that day, you wake up, based off of how hard the day or, you know, how hard your day is at any point when you're training. So let's say I'm about to train now, I'm already at a 13 strain. The whoop, the whoop strain coach will tell me how much more strain I can put on my body to still be in an optimal state of training for that day. You can also scale that so that it's uh, restorative, or you can push it so that it's overreaching. So uh, that sliding scale is pretty cool. You leave that yeah. open. Let's say you, you're just doing a workout, and you can kind of say, hey, I, I just want to hit the load today. Yeah. Really easy way for people to know where the limit is yeah. and when they should back off. Uh, a fun, another thing that's tied to that is we had the, the Whoop Snap pri previously, right, where you could overlay Whoop data on photos. Now we have live streaming, so you can record a workout that's going to overlay your heart rate data, your live accumulating strain, caloric burn. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing about the app is it, it, it learns you as an athlete. Yes. And where your peak is, where your sleep's at. Because we just interviewed Kelsey, and we looked at her app, and her daily strain looks very similar to my daily strain number. And guess <laughs> what? She works out a lot harder than I do. Right. Um, so kind of walk through the process of, like, how does it learn you as an athlete, and where should people be throughout the day? I mean, we have our Shrug Collective group of all the athletes and stuff in there, and sometimes I'll go in, and it's like the people at the top, everybody wants to win, and they have, like, 18, 19 and all I can think of my brain is, what are you doing? Slow down. I'm in decent shape, and you're doing 18, 19 a day. Where should people be in that daily strain and, like, playing with those numbers to understand how to manage intensity in their workouts? Right. So that's a perfect point. And we were actually having this conversation in the office today about, hey, uh, when I have a green recovery, it seems so much harder to accumulate strain. That's good. That's yeah. a good thing. Um, so the way that... Like I said earlier, the way we're, we're measuring strain is how hard your heart is working relative to your max. The more recovered you are, so let's just say, what's your recovery today? Uh, I don't know. That doesn't, okay. Yeah. All right. So We didn't look. We were traveling. We, we, probably not great. <laughs> probably Sorry. Not great. So let's just <laughs> use, let's use a standard test here. Five mile run, seven minute pace. And we're going to do that same exact workout with the same exact output. Green recovery, yellow recovery, red recovery. Yeah. Green recovery, it's going to be fairly low strain relative for you. So let's say that's an 11. Yeah. Let's say that same workout in the yellow is 13, and then it's 15 in the red. Mm. Same exact outp external output, yeah. right? That's just because your body's working less efficiently. So that's where the strain coach comes in. If you were to have, if you would have looked at that prior to starting the run, on the red day would have said, hey, you can only go to like eight today yeah that's all you have so that either means you need to back off the loading or back off the intensity vice versa if you know that you're doing a five mile run and you have a green recovery and you want to push the pace good that's going to get the heart rate up and that's going to be an equivalent level of strain so that's how you get to a 15 basically yeah on a day where you're feeling good that's how people should think about managing it it's do i need to reduce the intensity or loading or can i push the intensity or loading based off of how I'm feeling today. So yeah. it's, let's not say that there's an, an ideal strain for the day mm. for every single day. Yeah. There is an ideal strain based off of your recovery. So you really need to listen to your body uh, or, and the app 
Yeah. Uh, particularly in the red days, one one red day is not the end of the world. But if we start seeing trends, yeah. you need to make a change, especially probably need to work on recovery or sleep. Yeah. When when we think about because the daily strain is based off heart rate, and mm -hmm. we I had the example the first time we talked of like Doug and I were going through some really crazy business stuff, and like we would sit on the phone negotiating things, and I hadn't left my chair all day long, but then I would turn on the app and it'd be like, dude, you're at like a 16. <laughs> like I haven't left the chair, I haven't gone to the gym, like, but the intensity of the day and ha the heightened state of like just thinking and make like everything that's going on all of a sudden your day strain is really high but we get the question all the time when i mean we run this one ton challenge program so we're lifting a lot of weights and there's very little conditioning of how does lifting weights play into daily strain versus if somebody just went on a run and your heart rate's just mm -hmm. pounding all the time you go on a 30 minute run it looks like your heart rate is having like <coughs> excuse me more strain just because of the elevated heart rate, but how do we test for, or how do we play with the numbers for understanding just pure weightlifting uh, versus a cardio Right, that's, what, that's where we want to look more at the recovery aspect of this. Yeah. So with the lower HRV relative to your own baseline, you, you're going to have a lower recovery score. That's probably going to indicate that you need to augment the training. I believe you told me that you were doing this at, at the games, that based off of where people are in different recovery zones, this is effectively how you should load or change, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's that's some of the most proactive stuff that we've heard people doing. Naturally, we work with elite teams and groups, and we help them do that. But from a large-scale perspective where you're working with all these remote clients, that's actually pretty innovative, and a lot more people should be thinking about doing that, yeah. particularly with weightlifting, heavy lifting. You're probably going to have to again scale the loading or the intensity way back so if if it's a back squat day it doesn't mean don't back squat it means maybe totally focus on your technique switch it up to tempo I don't, i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure how you guys actually are scaling the work but is that similar to kind of well, how you would describe that we have a so there are athletes that are on our programs that have the app and then they i mean the biggest question is like well i have this now you guys talk about it on the show all the time and then I'm following this program, so how do we relate the two? And in a weightlifting program where the goal, which we're building you up to, is to create the biggest total possible of these six lifts, and now you have an app that tracks your recovery, it's like the goal is to max out. So how do we tailor somebody and just bring them back down? And I have people just write me messages of like, I'm in the red, what do I do? Or I'm in... Yellow all the time. I'm like, stay in the yellow. Yellow's, Yellow's fine. fine. It's Yellow's where you're great. hanging out. Um, and if it's green, get after it. But if you're if you're consistently in the red and we can't figure out, like, you, you're just, and for lack of a better term, you're just dragging ass in the gym and there's just no getting around the fact that you feel like crap, like, slow down. A hundred percent. I know our goal isn't to – our goal is to lift as much weight as possible, but maybe not today or maybe not tomorrow – Maybe let's slow it down for a week and then move into some heavier weights. Right. And by the way, I, I feel like we should point out that being in the yellow or being in the red as far as recovery is not like a bad thing. Yeah. Like if, you, if you're never in the yellow or the red, it probably means that you're just not training hard enough. Totally. Like you, you, need, you need to be in the red on occasion or <laughs> you really need to step up your game because you're not, <laughs> you're not stressing yourself enough to actually make yeah. any real progress. 100%. You get into the red, you recover, you get back in the green. And you should kind of have this back and forth dynamic, I would imagine. I, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, you have to overreach and put your body under stress. And even when you do everything correctly – you're still going to be knocked down a couple days. That's great. Here's a good, I mean, a perfect example is I was in the yellow basically for most of the last two weeks. Finally hit a red. I uh, was at a wedding in Newport last Thursday. And then I took it the next three days like incredibly easy. Just all like, you know, kettlebell work at the back of my car. Uh, less than 20 minutes both days. Came back Monday. Literally had my highest HRV number ever lowest resting heart rate and then i was like ah, i'm gonna go to the gym before we have this basketball game pr at about three different lifts <laughs> nice. so yeah. that's that's the perfect example of if yeah. you pull back a little bit when you do feel like man i'm absolutely gassed that's how quickly it can come back because i can tell you that thursday morning i felt like i was gonna die and went to the wedding then just kind of i'm gonna relax for a couple of days that's okay i promise you're not getting less fit 
in two and a half days, and yeah. your body needs that ability to bounce back. Yeah. Well, you talk mm -hmm. about it all the time uh, when you're tracking your stuff, uh, and we ask Kelsey the same of like, so what are the seven-day averages, the 30-day averages? Right. Those are like the, the consistency. And if one of the things people freak out about is like having a red day. Like, what happened? Well, uh, you just had a red day. Like, yeah. I, there's, like, you don't have to read into this. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you had a bad day and, like, you should just stay in bed all day. Like, those averages over time are the really big things that we should be focusing on. Correct. Um, just in, in understanding training and to get a, a much more broad picture of where you are. Right. I think you guys both really nailed it. It's we, we get more concerned when we start to see the trend of, the HRV is consistently suppressed and the resting heart rate just keeps coming up and up and up. Hmm. Obviously, you're going to live in the red. And if you're doing that with ample sleep, you're, something's off. Either you're, you're already in a state of overtraining and you have to back it way off or maybe something's off nutritionally, something like that. Do yeah. you want to yeah. know what Doug Larson's strain is right now? Sure. He's 15.4 today and actually third. In our in our special group here, Mr. Doug Larson, you made it. You're third place. Third place. If I was you, I'd do some jumping jacks right now and see if you can get that into the 16 so you can be winning. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just pulled up our little our group here. It was so <laughs> great. Um, so um, the, the what the hell was that? Is that? I think that's an error. 20. It's like it's like 20. Tw it's like oh. almost 21. Almost 21. 19. 19. Doug's been working what hard. What are you doing? Nothing. I think that's a mistake. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. Um, I was like, I was like, I was like twenty, 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 twenty for like four days in a row. I need to take take a chill pill. Take a day off. Take a day been? off. Huh? Where's your recovery been? Um, pretty good. Pretty uh, good. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like it's been pretty good. I'm not I'm not particularly tired, but nice. but but I feel like that sometimes is how you feel and how your body's actually recovering don't always necessarily pair. 100%. And so like, getting some actual real feedback like from from something that's more uh, objective than just, just how you feel, uh, I, th I feel like it's really important because sometimes there's a mismatch there. So this, uh, that, again, that's a perfect thing you said. Uh, that seems like maybe it's wrong. And, but if your recovery is very good, that will be the case. You'll look at this and be like, that doesn't feel like that. Like that was actually really easy for me. And you sh that's good. If, y if, you know, when you have these, for those that don't have uh, WHOOP and, the, and also for those that do, every time you complete a workout, you are given a screen score based off of your heart rate data. But you yeah. also have the option to input how hard you thought it was yourself on that scale of 0 to 21 and how you performed. So if you, let's say, just did whatever workout you guys did here and you said, oh, I was like a 10 and WHOOP said it was 15, it just means your body's working incredibly efficiently on that day. So accumulating high strain is not necessarily a bad thing. It's partially a byproduct of your body either being efficient or inefficient on that given day. Yeah. Um, the, the sleep coach. So one of the things that I geek out on, uh, in the hierarchy of things that you guys test, the HRV is by far the coolest one. It's the one that I, I feel like I score the best on. So I, <laughs> I of course, think it's the most important. <laughs> um, can you just, we had a question in the group um, of some of our members, just walk through, well, one, at the highest level, in case everybody missed our last show, one, go back and listen to it. We walked through all of the pieces, and um, we actually pulled my stuff up, and you can see me have a, a, a three-month-old for a little while. <laughs> my scores just go to absolute trash. Um, but what what is HRV, why we need to be testing it, and then um, as far as, like, Scores, recovery, how that all plays together? Totally. So heart rate variability is the measurement of the irregularities between our heartbeats. So our hearts aren't actually like metronomes. Uh, there are, it, it varies. It literally yeah. varies. And that's the measurement uh, that HRV is. So it's in milliseconds. That's what we're showing you. Why is it important? <coughs> so there's two parts of the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic, and they're both competing to send signals to your heart. So the higher that your heart rate variability is, the more receptive your heart is to both uh, systems competing. So effectively, how, how ready are you to respond to everything that's happening, either speeding up or slowing down your body? Why is that important? It's good for overall health, and it's good for, from a daily readiness perspective. What was the next part? Uh, how people should be 
using that number that they get every oh, day okay. and scale it or not scale oh, it. Why is it important in yeah, recovery? Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> don't measure HRV versus another person. It will either make you feel incredibly good or incredibly bad about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that goes for comparisons for almost any category. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, the important thing, categorically, <laughs> just be happy just, in your own world. Don't worry about other people. Hope yeah. you're moving in the right direction. <laughs> right. With all but, the, but it's individualized. Yeah, with the saying. root data, you should only be looking don't at don't. your own, and that's the way that we have it structured. <laughs> you're going to be looking at your heart rate variability compared to <sighs> your 30-day rolling average. If it's better than if it's better than your thir or higher than your 30-day rolling average, that's great. Your body's more primed. If it's lower, it's a little more rundown. That's kind of long and short. You just need to be aware of it. Like both Doug and Anders have said, it's not the end of the world. If you yeah. have a little bit of suppressed, that probably means you're working hard or training, or it could just be a hard day. Use that information to guide how you go about the day. So if you know you're not going to be able to eat later, eat sooner, eat, eat that big breakfast because you know it's a big day. You can take steps proactively to help yourself. If you do have a low HRV on, let's say we, I woke up this morning at a 30% recovery, if I do two recovery modalities over the course of the day, so let's say I foam roll and then I use a hypervolt, I have a, about an 80% chance to improve my next day recovery by about 20%. Wow. So hmm. if you don't just look at it as, man, I don't know what's going on, and you get more proactive about what you're doing, uh, it's going to help you one later in the day. Even if I did those two and I didn't train, so let's say I had still have that 30% recovery, I do a couple things in the morning. I do some deep breathing and some foam rolling, and then I come back and train in the afternoon. My body is actually going to be in a much better state than I was when I woke up. So you can, you're not going to see that change in the app, but you can actively do things to help, a, let's say, an afternoon performance or an evening performance yeah. if you're feeling kind of run down. Have you noticed anything in your HRV scores since you started doing a little meditation journaling stuff? Yeah, I just started doing that a couple of weeks ago, and it's, I feel like it's really helped my my peace of mind, so to speak. Like I feel yeah. calmer and less stressed, um, but I, I haven't actually looked looked at my whoop and noticed Compared any, any like big changes yeah. for me specifically. Well, we were talking. Yeah, at the but games I'm, I'm the actually gonna go back to look through my data now that now that you said that because I, I didn't even I never even thought to like make the comparison, yeah. but I'm but I think I should. Yeah. 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 Uh, he was talking about when we did the the Whoop podcast. We were talking about just like when we're on the road and stuff. When food shows up, we eat all of it because like twelve hours will go by and we won't see food again. And like your your body has to go through all these like. I mean, I think of the day that we we did the interview. We actually woke up, ate breakfast at like eight a.m. and then we didn't leave or eat or have water for like thirteen straight hours. And I was like, we're at a fitness competition. Again. Where is the vegetable? Where is the water? Wa water is still the hardest thing to get at the CrossFit <laughs> Games. No, so, no question about it. Um, but your body just isn't prepared for that stuff. So when, when there is food or when there is water, it's like we just consume all of it and, and try to make it as healthy as we possibly can, knowing that who knows what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. um, in it, our day. Yo, total side note from what we've been talking about. I really like the fact that this is harder to unclip. Oh, the three? Yeah, to actually yeah. like to the actually pull it open and get it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At first, like when I first tried, I was like, I was used to the the the, the version two, and I started. And I was like, fuck, it's stuck. Is it broken? Like, what's going on? And I finally just pulled it open. I was like, oh, they made it harder to unclip. That's fantastic because I, I got I got little kids, and like yeah. any time any time it's around, they just go clink and they and they unclip oh, it totally. Unclip it all the time, and it drives me nuts. Yeah. And so now now they can't do it anymore, which which is fantastic. Yeah, and particularly you know, it's interesting. NBA players in the off season. You can see them all over social media. So people like uh, Drew Holiday and Tobias Harris are two that I've seen pretty prominently wearing their whoop as they're playing pickup, and they don't do anything to cover it. So by having that be harder, you know, there's obviously a lot of wrist action. It's yeah. not going to get swiped off. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a really important thing. And w uh, if someone's yeah. swimming or surfing, I also don't want that coming undone and just kind of disappearing forever. Do you guys work with Ben Bruno? I know Ben Bruno. Yeah, but well, I, I don't know if you guys are no. officially like working I, together. I don't believe that we are. I'm excited for the uh, the results, but he posted a couple months ago, um, and I know he's doing this because he's done it with other things many years back, um, where he's testing the basically your heart rate or 
metabolic demand or whatever you want to call it for every single exercise in a specific time domains to see how hard that specific exercise is on your body. So like, are the battle ropes really the best conditioning tool compared to like, why don't we just do barbell split squats? Because but the, th the thing is that's completely individualized. Maybe the, Maybe the battle ropes are really good for you and really shitty for me. I think battle ropes are not good for anyone. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> hey, let's, 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 let's take the battle ropes out. All right. Sorry, say, battle ropes people. <laughs> let's, let's say how hard is how hard is the. Do it in a split stance. <laughs> Do it. It's different. Sideways. <laughs> Sorry. So I didn't mean to upset you. You're being crass, but pros yes. and cons. Pros yes. and cons. Yeah. Yeah. So how hard is uh, <laughs> 20 minutes on the assault bike for you versus me? Oh, well, the rower is definitely easy for you. I got four well, strokes all of it. to any each one of any, yours. Any yeah. cardio thing is easy for me, right? For sure. But So then you say split squats. Incredible. That would be way harder for me. So my strain relative is going to be completely different. So yeah. while it's great, I mean, that's effectively what Whoop does, right? So he's, yeah. he's trying to take the long road about it. But by wearing Whoop, you understand how all different things affect you, particularly where your weaknesses are. So yeah. people that are terrible. Yeah, I'll say terrible at cardio. Their strain is going to be astronomical compared to someone who's fairly efficient, vice versa with weightlifting or yeah. gymnastics or anything where the technical skill is not as innate mm -hmm. and you really have to work hard. So you guys go into the gym, you just, yeah, throw, throw some weight around, no problem. Yeah. For a person, and let's say you threw 315 for like 20 reps, another person comes in and they're basically doing 65 pounds and – they're thinking about it so hard. Their strain is well, and way higher than you. Of Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a real added value of, of kind of the strain yeah. metric. Have you seen the whoop pop up in sports that you just never? I mean, NBA is really cool. I think those are the coolest athletes that exist. Th um, I, they're in. I mean, they're so athletic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're it's, just they're freaks. just freaks of nature. Yeah. We've seen. Uh, it's crazy how it's been growing in the golf world recently. And Golf is really hard. I went and played hmm. um, Tobacco Road like five, six months ago and went out to the driving range just to hit some balls. And I came back, turned my phone on, and it was like, you just worked out. It's like, no, I didn't. I just hit 30 golf balls at the range. And it came back as like my strain, just my heart rate, the concentration, everything is just super elevated yeah um, i would imagine those golfers for four and a half five straight hours and they don't walk slow on golf courses at least they don't have to carry their own bags yeah uh, that, that another add another element yeah but absolutely and then they're just going back to back to back you know four days if you're making every single day every cut yeah it's uh it's pretty cool and it's been cool to see people win w with whoop so you yeah. know it's almost like right when they get it so we won last i think it was last weekend and then right when Rory first got it, he also won. So that's awesome. That's pretty cool. You can't help but good marketing. We have a good product, the and then the best athlete shows up. They and grab it themselves. Stands the on the podium. Thing. This, wear it. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, downhill biking. Oh, I bet that's so mm, intense. That yeah, motocross is an interesting one. Uh, a lot of <laughs> this is a funny. You said where where would it show up? Uh, Ultimate frisbee. Sweet. That's a <laughs> serious sport. I bet those are really, really high strain scores in an ultimate frisbee game. Oh yeah, you're it's right. basically I mean, like that's. It was like playing a soccer. Game. I was going to say it's pretty. It's like yeah. soccer. Yeah. But yeah, everybody's playing midfield. Like everybody has to be moving oh, yeah. in that. You run a lot. Yeah. Fun fact: I was in the Australian Mixed Nationals National Championships playing wow. ultimate frisbee. It's the only game I've ever played. It's not wow. on a team. You're really? Basically an Olympian. Yeah. My, bro awesome. my brother's on the team, and they just like, gave me a jersey so and let me go play. <laughs> <laughs> for, a, for a game or two, it was dope. That's my whole, my whole job is just to like run in the end zone and and, and catch, catch it, catch yeah. it. Yeah, I feel like when Don't you go out it. and do that, <laughs> just like you talk about efficiency of movement, like for each person, it's going to vary. I feel like if I were to go play, I feel like I'm in good shape. But if I went and played ultimate frisbee, I'd be dead in five minutes. Like that long distance running with mixed sprints built into it, that mm -hmm. would crush me. Or if I went and played like a pickup basketball game because I get lost in the first. As soon as someone, as soon as the ball gets touched by somebody, I'm lost. I don't know how to play basketball at all. Mm. And then like stop, start, pass, ah, <laughs> lost, 21. It would just show up. The, your recovery would definitely be 
pretty, pretty bad the next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Using all sorts of muscles and changing directions in ways you haven't in a long time. Yeah. Yo, by the way, I really love that it, it gives you separate scores for time in bed and time asleep. Yeah. So, like, that's the hardest part about figuring out how much you actually slept. Like, you're like, oh, I got in bed around then. I think I laid there for a little while before. I like, it just tells you straight up, like, here's how much you actually slept. I feel like that's really valuable. It's so important because what people find out, and this is from subjective reporting previously in different reports, where people that used to self-report sleep before anything could really track sleep were always overshooting by about an hour. And yeah. stra strangely, that's kind of me too. Uh, not that I'm over-reporting, but th I spend uh, probably like an hour more in bed than I'm actually asleep, even on nights that I sleep really well, mm. which is fine. But um, w when we're thinking about that time in bed versus time asleep, that sleep efficiency, if you're yeah. seeing that metric, 90% is a really good place to be. And <coughs> if you're going to be awake at any point, it's probably a little bit better to front load that or, you know, if you're just kind of sitting there. Um, I wind down in bed, you know, so I dim the lights, I start to wind down, I'm in bed. Because I'm on such a consistent sleep schedule, which I know is really hard for people on the road, I can get a huge chunk of slow wave sleep right when I go to sleep, and that's something I kind of pride myself on, and that's kind of the goal for slow wave sleep, is you get in such a consistent rhythm of going to bed and waking up that that first little bit when you're asleep is actually going to be deep sleep right away. Otherwise, it becomes harder and harder to get that deep sleep but if you can get that huge chunk right at the beginning, just from literally going to bed and waking up at the same time, that's an absolute game changer. Wait, so wait, just make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. If, if you talk, if you yeah. always go to bed at 10 and you always wake up at 6 versus yeah. having some variation in when you go to bed and when you wake up, you're going to get more deep sleep with, you're the, with get, the consistency? You're going to get higher quality sleep with more consistency. Mm -hmm. So you can go kind of a half hour each way uh, on the wake up or go to bed, but the closer you are, you know, that, that sleep consistency metric, the better you're going to get, uh, you know, quality sleep over the course of the night. Yeah. So that's actually been shown at Harvard. They measured uh, that sleep consistency. It's not that they were getting such a duration, but people that had more regular bed and wake times had a higher GPA. Hmm. So it w not so much uh, a duration thing. Duration's important, obviously. Once we get less than six hours of sleep, that's when everything starts to fall apart. We're going to get sick. We're going to get hurt. Our body's going to be beat. Um, if we can get seven hours of sleep, but we are priming ourselves to basically just get ass-kicking sleep, you know, 50% of your night uh, in REM plus slow wave, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good place to be. That's a, and that's probably more realistic for most working adults. Yeah. Hey, it's great. I, I still need to spend time with my family. I have things to take care of for myself. Probably have a little bit of work to do. If I can get seven and change really good hours of sleep, but it's high quality sleep, great. That that's amazing. Yeah, I, I like how, uh, especially on version two, like the the last version that we had, it, it told you how much sleep you got and then how much sleep you need mm -hmm. to get the next night in order to be fully recovered. And then on now on version 3.0, uh, you can you can set the individual days of the week yeah. for how recovered you need to be. Like if you know that like you know, every Tuesday, Wednesday, you have like, you know, you have big meetings and then you got to like play your ultimate frisbee game after work or whatever it is. Like you can set it where on Tuesday or sorry, Monday nights and Tuesday nights for the Tuesday, Wednesday, hard days, you, your, your whoop app will tell you to get a little bit more sleep on those days. So it's individualized for your whole week. Correct. And so for those that don't understand that it's within the app, you can say, I want to get by, I want to perform or I want to peak. And based on that, that's going to either be 70% of your sleep need 85% uh, or 100% of your sleep need. Mm. I don't know if that demystified it for everybody, but that's those, those are the numbers we're working with. I'm just trying to get by <laughs> most of the yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, and like Doug said. About 70%. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> just don't die. Just don't die. <laughs> just don't die. Um, it's, it's based off of your natural sleep is where we start. So that sleep need, when you go into your app, we're taking your last 30 days of sleep, and that's the base. That's the real time. Then based off of your strain, we're going to add some time. If you haven't been getting 100% of that sleep need, that's called sleep debt. We add a little bit more time, and any sort of naps that you take is going to reduce the time. That's where we come up with our magical uh, sleep need. And it's going to change depending on what the intention for the next day is. Yeah. I, I haven't actually 
investigated this or like checked, but if you take like a 15 minute power nap, does it know you took a power nap or you have to input that if, on your own? So if you're in deep enough sleep, so if you get REM or slow wave, it's going to register that nap. Mm -hmm. If it's just light sleep, you're probably going to have to enter it yourself and that will still, that will adjust uh, the, the sleep need. So the amount of sleep you need that, that next that night will Yeah, will it will be adjusted Yeah, if you take the, the nap in that day. But if you are so gassed, so what, after the CrossFit Games, I flew back and took like a one hour nap and it was like 25 minutes of slow wave sleep and 30 minutes of REM out of an hour. Um, so <laughs> right, right into it. <laughs> Those yeah. are the best. Just, and then you wake up and you're like, I don't know what where, happened over the last three where days. Where am I? Yeah. yeah. I blacked um, out. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, the ideal way to nap it, since we're talking about it, is either if you can get 30 or 90 minutes. I know I just said I took an hour nap, but <laughs> 30 or 90. Wait, is, why is are those awesome. numbers so... <laughs> it's an just kind of been... Is like a full... I know, it's like a serious thing. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a pretty, pretty serious thing. I'm sure the 90 thing is like one... Full um, sleep cycle. What's it? Is it circadian or ultradian? I, I get those two mixed up. Yeah. One circadian or ultradian rhythm, whichever one is 90 minutes, is like one full sleep cycle. You know anything about yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, well, that's... Yeah, it's either you're getting like a little jolt, you know, obviously the science behind like the power nap, or like you said, being able to like actually get a, a, a good bit of sleep. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if we talked about this last time, but the ideal time is like seven hours after waking. If, take you, a nap? if you were to take a nap. Really? So no, we did not talk about that. I never that. heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can basically time it so that that's like after your lunch and you have the ability to kind of slow down because that's when your body's naturally Siesta slowing time. down anyway. Yeah. I think Europeans really got this thing on lock. They know, hey, <laughs> you gotta get, you got to take this middle of the afternoon nap. Moving to Spain. Got to do it. See, but Spain, they eat too late. Then, oh, then they eat like 10 p.m., don't they? That's like on the early. If you're going to like a bad restaurant, it's like, hey, yeah. come in at 10. Yeah. But the good stuff's yeah. like midnight. Uh, we had a couple questions. Well, not even questions, but more comments on um, some people that do float tanks, uh, which really is just a piece of the larger conversation of like, what ways can people kind of create a program or a system to getting to sleep in ways that they can improve their recovery? Um, float tanks being one of them, meditation being one, if there's supplements. Um, are you guys finding like a ways that are better than others, um, supplements? I think it's largely individualized, and I know that seems like a cop-out. Totally. But it, I want know. it exact for <laughs> every single human. <laughs> right now, how about take CBD have, have oil got, plus? Guys, I like infallibility. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you guys uh, done like uh, any different of the sauna stuff? Uh, I have a sauna in my garage, yep. uh, but I just moved, so I haven't even opened it. And it's 175 degrees in North Carolina every day now. So <laughs> uh, I had an electrician literally putting it in, and he was like, "Why? <laughs> Why do you have just this? close the garage door?" I was like, well, "You make a good point." So. A really easy one is kind of uh, contrast therapy, but you can do it in the simplest form possible by setting your room to be in as cold as possible and then hopping in a warm shower for like two to three minutes and then just hopping out into this freezing air. Yeah, it, <coughs> That's going to start the cooling down process of your body so it starts to get ready to sleep. That's like the cheap way if you're not going to do some serious contrast therapy. Yeah. I, the breathing has been huge, I think. Anyone that's incorporated either journaling or breathing leading up to bedtime, that's had a huge effect. So if you think breathing's a ridiculous thing, that's wrong. Yeah. It's probably the easiest thing to do with the least amount of time. Five, ten minutes is going to lower your heart rate significantly and prime your body to basically just be centered and go to sleep. If you For people that are way outside that world, yeah. like they hear like breathing like – of course, I breathe. I'm alive. I breathe. <laughs> I'm like, alive. What, like, what do you mean? Like, what's a ten sec a ten minute session look like? You probably have to build up the cadence, right? You know, if you're not used to any sort of breathing protocol, um, I would suggest kind of looking into. There's several people that have kind of done research on it. Have you guys ever worked with uh, Brian McKenzie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, right, Brian. So mm -hmm. Brian's been uh, playing around with breathing stuff for a long time, and there's different. There's probably different protocols. I know you just said you s before. You train, yeah. You breathe. I do. I'm what? A weird so guy what? In the I know, but but what? <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's the same concept. So yeah. what kind of breathing are you doing? Uh, I don't follow really anything specific. I just try to 
there's a lot there's there's endless reasons why I do it and it's not every single session but I would say at least 80% of the sessions um, I will just go to the corner and just sit there and it's creating space away from work and just actually like okay now I'm training um, I, I doubt that I'm like meditating I doubt that I'm doing anything like overly special but a pretty regular commitment to before I do anything really helps me like stay injury free um, it helps me be focused on actually being in the gym and then the I would say on a training side of things I like to think about like a full spectrum of where I'm at so if I can go from as calm as possible to having some sort of peak effort in my training that is going to create like the most value in the training session and then like conditioning piece which is going to have my heart rate at a high level and then what am I doing to cool down and some sort of smaller breathing piece that just allows me to re-enter into whatever I'm about to go back into which is usually going from business to training to husband and dad um, and separating all those pieces with just like a little bit uh, that's all a right. really good rhythm that I've been a part of in my own. I don't really talk about it too much because I don't know how, like, special it is. Um, but I've been doing it for about three years now um, where I just sit there. And I think that watching my brain. So another place that I do this is every night before I go to bed. It's like when people are like, oh, I don't have time to meditate or I don't have time to breathe. I don't have time to do all this stuff. Like, Everybody owns the, the five minutes before you fall asleep. No one's talking in your bedroom. No one's no one's bothering you at that time. So um, you can sit there and just slowly exhale. Like, don't overcomplicate it. Don't worry about And you can just start to get practice watching your brain. And there will be nights where I'll get into that, like, five minutes, and I can tell that I'm stressed out or worried about something, like, that's like the anxiety time when people are very anxious is they they're in bed and then their sleep sucks and nobody's nobody's above this and I I know like I in the first five minutes of me laying in bed and like trying to just clear my mind so I can go to sleep I'll know that I'm gonna be up till one in the morning because it's just there's something different about like the anxiety yeah. level or the stress level or what's going on and like the importance of work or family of whatever that thing whatever that moment is um, but every night I make a conscious effort to just breathe a little bit. And every time I walk into the gym, assuming I'm not in like a group class and I don't want to like, I, the only, the only times that I don't do it are when I'm in a group class and I feel like I would be the guy in the corner saying like, look at me, like I have to do this before I do what you right. do. And I don't like being that person, but if I'm training on my own and I'm just lifting, um, instead of like going right into stretching, I'll just sit there yeah and then your muscles calm down you're not bringing the tension into the workout you're not bringing the stress into the workout you just calmly enter a new space where you go work out yeah i think so I, you touched on a couple of really good ones there the recentering before uh you train yeah and the recentering and identifying the anxiety in bed so a lot of times when people are think of our breathing then the head immediately just is full of all the shit that either is to come or on your mind it's good to it's important to basically acknowledge it hey yeah this is i'm stressed it's okay i'm stressed this is why i'm stressed the more that you're that breathing helps bring that to the surface so part of being able to get, get to sleep and get good sleep yeah. is identifying the things that would keep you awake is this going to affect me tomorrow can I handle it? Yeah. Mo you know, 99 times out of 100, you're probably okay. Yeah. And then you continue with the breathing. So you can find a cadence that works for you. Some people like five in, five out, 10 in, five. Find something yeah. that is achievable and actually you, you're you seeing an, a positive impact for yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. going to be different. So I, li I like Mark Devine's box breathing. You ever done that? Yeah. Uh, where it's like you know, like six in, I don't know the numbers are, pick whatever number you want, but like six in, hold for six, six out, like be fully exhaled for another six. And so you're just you're just going through this this rhythm of, of six seconds for each of the four yeah. phases, just like you'd have four phases for tempo for lifting, you have four phases for tempo for your for your breathing. For breathing. 
And then it's, it's a very, to me, it's a very calming, presencing effect whenever I do choose to do yeah. that. Yeah. You, you really have to think, like, you do have to think about that box breathing 100%. It's, mm. you, you can't go uh, autopilot at all. Yeah. I think one of the tough things about the breathing part is, too, is, like, the people that are at the top of the breathing world are, like, they've, like, went and they were monks for five years. And then they came back and they were, like, we have this app now. Like, you should download this app. And if you haven't <laughs> meditated for hours on end, like, you don't even know. Like, well, you don't have to go get all spiritual. If that's, like, something that happens down the line, awesome. But everybody can just lay in bed for five minutes and try to breathe in through their nose and slowly exhale. Like, that's really just at the heart of the recovery, your ability to just transition into sleep, lower your blood pressure, lower your heart rate, and then move into it. It's not, like... Take two hours out of your day today to go on this spiritual journey to uncover all of the problems of your life. You don't have to do that. Just something <laughs> something a little bit every day is going to be way it better than that two-hour journey, and it shows up. You sleep a lot better, and your scores show it. Do you guys think about nasal breathing only when you're training mm -hmm. at all? What I, are I don't. No. I haven't done that. I've heard people talk about it, but, yeah, I, yeah. but I have never it done seems, that. It seems to be a, an, One an emerging of our good thought. In, in MMA, yes. Yes. In MMA, all the time. Yeah, especially like boxing, kickboxing. Like, that's how you get knocked out. You got your mouth wide open, you get in the jaw, and then you're, you're done for. So in MMA, certainly, but more of a, an aspect of the sport rather than I'm doing CrossFit or whatever, and I'm just breathing through my nose for, for a different reason. Right. You're not just taping your mouth shut before you go to sleep? We mm -hmm. have a good – but do you know who Kenny Kane is? I don't. He's another good buddy of ours. He's he's super deep into that, and he programs that stuff at his gym. With like, uh, he works. He's actually quite close with Divine and, yeah. and Brian McKenzie. Yeah. Yeah. And they they do the testing of like, take a big breath. Farmer carries back and forth. Count your steps. How well you're recovering. All that. So. I yeah, remember doing some stuff with Brian a couple of years ago, uh, in California, and it was effectively hyper oxygenating yourself, yeah. prior to, a max effort. So it was 20 deep inhale, exhales, like as much as you could. I think it was, at that point, it was just all fr through your mouth. It was a pretty interesting one. And then it basically, gave, if I was to hop on a rowing machine, I could go for two minutes at a wild pace. Mm -hmm. and, and then the wheels come off. But, you know, just kind of interesting stuff. Yeah. That, that self-experimentation with breathing. And you say, oh, well, maybe I could do this. But Do you guys work yeah. with the XPT at all? Uh, we're talking to XPT. Yeah. Yeah. XPT's, I would I, uh, love to go out there with you guys. Have you, uh, you guys haven't done anything yet? Oh, I've, I've been up to multiple days at Laird and Gabby's house. That's such, that, that is the coolest name drop of all time. I th I'm glad you Laird, threw it in. Laird and Gabby <laughs> invited me to their house. In. That happened. No that big deal. That existed in my life. It's out there. No um, big deal. It feels amazing. Um, my I've, wife, I've been up my there wife twice. My wife, Sarah, actually went there prior to XPT existing and Laird was doing that pool stuff. Yeah. She was rehabbing uh, you know, post Olympics trying to train for another and that pool stuff. It's great. Her and and her pair partner just Yeah, it would be very wild. interesting. Um, PJ is a really, really smart guy and he works with a lot of MMA guys. Um, and they're really pushing the breathing thing very hard. I think they're coming out with an app soon. Um to, to just put some, like, programming and stuff together with it. Um, but their whole – so the days that I went through it, Laird walks you through, like, an hour, 60, 90-minute long breathing session. And then your whole body, you're like – if you really want to get into the breathing world, your whole life can change. But there's some really freaky stuff that you can do to your body with a lot of oxygen. Um, and then going straight from that breathing session straight into the pool – um, so everybody's like super calm and relaxed, and then you go into a place where you freak out if you've never done it before. Um, and then the ability to perform and stay calm, and you're underwater, and, and there's a whole different plane of movement and how lifting weights underwater changes things. So um, it'd be very cool to basically measure hang someone out. at the beginning yeah. of, of this, and as they acclimate more and get more and more comfortable, For sure. their strain is going to go way down. And obviously, their heart rate data is going to be. Yeah. Crazy. It would be very interesting to get yeah. in. What, are you guys going to Hawaii or talking to them? It's a different department question. 
We're talking I'd love to. to. I yeah. really want to go to Hawaii. I totally want to go in December. You should yeah. come. Yeah, uh, come hang out. Hey, he, <laughs> if we want to do this again, I'm in. Yeah, you know, no, you know I'm there. We're definitely, uh, yeah, we're we're hopefully going to be heading out there in December to Kauai. Is that where they're at? Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a big, big thing, and we're going to go hopefully talk about training. That's awesome. Be That's going to be a great trip. We're going to bring our whoops, make sure that we uh, document it all. Through strain scores. Yo, I know, I know. Gen three just got released, and it's, it's doing really well right now. But for for the future, what uh, what are some of the upcoming uh, features or just pieces of whoop that you're excited about right now? You got anything you want to share about visions for, about where, for the future? Where we want to go? Yeah, after we just redid the whole thing yeah. and made all these. <laughs> that's what's that's next? people are always like. Now what's that's next? How yeah. it, that's how it always is. Yeah. Yeah. New iPhone gets released. Hey, great. Okay, what's the next one? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna keep adding functionality to what we can do with the new hardware. So the new hardware is just the, a gateway to being able to connect all these different things and plug into different platforms. So people use training peaks. Uh, it allows us to push into there. What we want to start getting into is similar to what you do right now, kind of subjectively with your programming, but how can a coach or someone that writes a big training program program, if you're green, yellow, red and here's how you're going to scale appropriately so if you're if you are remote you, there's no guesswork you you're making this based off of you know intelligent training uh, and their body on that day it's like a when you animal house when you have a gym <laughs> one block shit. from fenway there's going to be people that walk <laughs> in the door that don't understand what snatch and clean and jerk are mm -hmm. oh did, did somebody that, just do that? Yeah, there was a guy out there that was like <laughs> rapping, and the dog was like, "Get out of here! <laughs> you don't belong here." So the more interactive we can make it, we want to keep giving people more and more feedback that yeah. is actionable. Yeah. It started with data collection. Now we have all these data s sets, and we want to get more granular with it. So some things I know that uh, are pretty cool coming out are, let's say the drinking question. Hey, did you have drinks? Now it's not just going to be yes or no if it's yes then it's going to be what did you have and then effectively a sliding scale so you're going to learn about hey beer really messes me up yeah. or i can drink tequila all night things like that um, the best feedback ever it <laughs> says i can drink tequila <laughs> yes. all night long i'm Perfect. good <laughs> but we want to start doing that so it's not did you take sleep medication did you take melatonin cbd like you mentioned yep. um, anything magnesium some other supplement so you can see those effects as opposed to you know, People want more and more. They have yeah. the taste, and we want to give that to them. We want to keep getting deeper and deeper for, yeah. for those people that engage yeah. with it. Is that, is that something that you guys you guys are putting those questions in there, like the CBD question or the, or the drink question, like, or is that something where the, the users themselves can can enter their own uh, their I, own things? Like, if I want to put in there that um, you know that I that I could God now I'm not thinking of any any reasonable thing. So you mentioned CBD. Like, if I said like that I that I smoke weed before bed or something like that, like I can input whatever I want, that type of thing. That's the point we want to get it to. Yeah. We are, we've kind of spoken with very engaged users and people that have been on for a long time just to see their feedback on certain user inputs they'd like to see. Yeah. So big things that have come up have been those four I mentioned, like you know CBD. Um, we probably should throw in a marijuana question. Uh, in any form, I, I'd, love to know, I'd love to know if any, I if you know. I slept better after I have sex. Like if I have sex and then go to sleep, okay. I, I'd love to know so if I, do I really that, sleep better? I, I feel you like I do. Had a sleep we we used to have that, and then it went to shared bed, and now it's going to be. Uh, did you have? There's sex? a huge difference between <laughs> shared bed and sex. Yeah, well, that's why <laughs> <laughs> Doug and I shared a bed last night. True story. <laughs> Shout out to Verb. <laughs> Verb one Austin. king, one king. <laughs> yeah, we want to see the difference between <laughs> sex, masturbation, and then that could be separate from sharing a bed. Right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> not yeah. everyone here. Shared bed, masturbated. Didn't he wake him up? <laughs> <laughs> what was your sleep yeah. score last night? Mine was great. <laughs> That's why you just cranked out that workout. Man, <laughs> we're, dude, you have a meeting right now. We have to kick you out of here. You okay. have to, you have to oh go yeah, do yeah. your yeah. thing. Yeah. We're just getting right? into the good stuff. Uh, <laughs> where can people find you and Whoop? Whoop, whoop.com. Uh, we're all over the podcast. Yeah. Hit us up. We're here. We're here for you. Awesome. Do yeah. you want people to know where you personally are on the Instagram? Where I personally am? Oh, I was at the end of that Buttery Bros video at, at Lombardi Michael. <laughs> Shout out to the tag. I want to get on a Buttery Bros video. <laughs> How uh, do I do that? Yeah. It's so well edited. 
They're so pro. Yeah, they do. They do a great job. Whoop.com. Yeah. We're all wearing them. We love them. I do love it. Yeah, yeah. I really, really enjoy it. Brand. Oh yeah, brand new colors launched. Just launched. If you like the new Pronet band, there's amazing new colors that just launched. Perfect for end of summer, beginning of fall. Gonna be some really, really cool stuff coming in the. Uh, you know, bands, strap department. I love it. So, yep. Doug Larson. You bet. Find me on Instagram at Douglas E. Larson. OneTonChallenge.com. I'm Anders Warner at Anders Warner. We're the Shrug Collective at Shrug Collective. We will see you guys next Wednesday.